Hey Razorback fans and welcome into the first episode of our four-part series looking back at the year of Arkansas Athletics with Arkansas Athletics Director Hunter Juracek. just so much to go over, but in this episode, we're gonna start off with football. What stands out to you about that season that they had this year? Well, obviously going to the bowl game and mm -hmm. winning in dramatic fashion to secure a winning season, a second consecutive bowl victory. Um, there's a lot of things that happened during the course of the year. You had some injuries to our leaders on offense and defense and KJ Jefferson and Bumper Pool, and mm -hmm. um, we were so close to just being a little bit different season. Yeah. If things go your way down in Dallas and that field goal doesn't hit the upright, and you know you remember the LSU game, KJ didn't play, and we were right mm -hmm. there to the very end. And you win those two games, and you're, you're having a similar season to what you had the year before. Yeah, there were definitely a couple of gut punch moments, but there were so many exciting ones to look back on as well. I think we have a couple clips of you getting pretty excited at games as well. Sure, I never get excited at games. Never, I don't know what course. you're talking about. Are you always on the sideline? <laughs> I rotate between the sidelines and my suite up on the Founder Suite okay. level, but I'll generally will start um, on the sidelines and then make my way up um, after we get done with the first half presentations up mm -hmm. to my suite and then okay. usually come back down and into the third quarter. Well, there was one during the Missouri State game that we have with Bryce Stevens in that long touchdown run that he had, and you're on the sideline for that one. We've got to take a quick look at yeah, it. Yeah, he runs right by me. I remember I, that. I saw yes. it. We're, we've, we honed in on you on the video oh, a couple awesome. times. <laughs> so we're going to pass good. you here in a second. And there you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so do you remember that moment, maybe what you were saying, what was going through your head? I'm not sure what I'm saying, but I, <laughs> I think I know he's going to score a touchdown, and that gives us, I believe, a 10-point lead, if I remember that mm -hmm. correctly, right? Because yeah. I think we were up three. Uh, we, we'd just gotten a big stop uh, from them, and he, he returns that, and you feel like this pretty much puts the game away for us. At least I didn't run all the way try to... You didn't try to run with him. Run with him down the sidelines, <laughs> but uh, yeah, get excited. And you, you saw him, I think, peek up at the video board. I think he knew... He was going to score as well. Right. I mean, how big was that game to take that win over Missouri State? I feel like there was a lot of pressure to win it, and then also it was the first game or last game before SEC play. Sure. I mean, that was a really good Missouri State team that mm -hmm. came in, led by Bobby Petrino, yeah. obviously hit, making his first appearance, I believe, back in Razorback Stadium yep. since um, he was our head football coach. Obviously, their team was very motivated. Yeah. Our fans were motivated. Missouri State gave us all that we needed, and it was great to get over the hump and, and win in really some, somewhat a dramatic fashion there at the end and closing it out in the fourth quarter. Your reaction to one of Sam Pittman's quotes of the year, I'd have to say. I mean, he's always got some good little nuggets. The host of this party was going to be serving up today. What's the drink of choice tonight? Well, you know, I, I'm not promoting it, but I like some old cold beer. I think I'm going to have one. <laughs> not promoting it. <laughs> what, first off, did you end up having an old cold beer with Sam Pittman after this game? We most likely did, yes. Most likely. Yes. It was the Cincinnati game when Arkansas won that one, and I just thought it was so funny that he brought that up after the win. <laughs> he, he did, and that's you know what makes that so special mm -hmm. for those of us that know Sam Pittman like we do? That's right. Sam Pittman. Absolutely. I mean, he's going to answer. You ask him a question, he's going to answer the question, and that's, yeah. that's who he is. That's what makes him such a good football coach, and that's what has made him embraced by this entire state of Arkansas. Absolutely. I know that the players love – that part of him as well. And we've seen some really fun moments from the players this season. You know, we always have cameras on the sidelines looking at everything. And KJ Jefferson had another really fun quote, I'll say, to put an exclamation point during that BYU game. KJ gets the snap, pressure coming, and KJ can't get away. Oh, he did get away, my gosh! He throws it to the receiver at midfield, it's complete. Inside the 40, inside the 30 is Knox, inside the 25. How in the world did KJ get away? The excitement <laughs> from Z right there, by the way, is I think what everyone was feeling when they were watching this. It's incredible. Matt Zimmerman's trying to point out to Chuck who's making the tackle. And exactly. then Chuck kind of squats that sheet of paper like, away, no. <laughs> you know, because he sees KJ's run. I mean, that's 
That's KJ Jefferson. I mean, yeah. I would love to see a highlight film of how many tackles he's broken throughout his career, and I'm sure he will continue to do that uh, during the upcoming season. But uh, I think that, if I remember correctly, that was at the end of the first half in the second yeah. quarter, and uh, really kind of pushed that lead out and, mm -hmm. and gave us a little bit of security there in a really tough environment out in Utah. But what a special player KJ is, and boy, we're blessed to have him coming back to lead our football team this year. We saw the strength from him physically, and um, he made a little exclamation. I lift before. weights. I lift weights. <laughs> I lift. <laughs> Just in case anyone wasn't aware, right? He lifts weights, yeah. and I, I love it. I mean, he broke what three? tackles in this play. I mean, and it's those crazy. are defensive linemen first that have him that are pretty strong defensive linemen. There's a <laughs> linebacker and then he makes a pass. It's uh, just unbelievable yeah. uh, how talented he is and how strong he is. And he obviously lifts weights, but he's got a lot obviously. of given talent, talent as well. Absolutely. I mean, he's just so fun to watch out on the field and he played such a massive role in Arkansas becoming bowl eligible yet again. So you know that Sam Pittman had to bring out the bowling ball. Larry, Larry, as we call it. Yes. <laughs> what do you what do you, what do you think about Larry first? I think it I think it's great. Yeah. I think again that's Sam Pittman. What what else signifies kind of us going bowling in a, a Sam Pittman bowling ball? You can kind of Perfect. see him in his bowling shirt with his bowling bag oh, going yep. to a bowling alley um, here. <laughs> um, I'm assuming Coach has bowled at some point in time in his life, and mm -hmm. um, I think it's a pretty neat. Kind of that's that blue collar mentality that our Absolutely. program has and that our program's leader has. Yeah. Let's take a look at the clip because I know that the guys get all jacked up when they see Larry coming into the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in there too. Did you know he was bringing it out? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you were prepared. I was prepared. We've been prepared <laughs> for a couple weeks for Larry. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like being in the locker room for moments like this? It, it makes... It's the icing on the cake for me as a director of athletics because I do what I do. We all do what we do that work here for those student athletes and for those moments because yeah. um, they work so incredibly hard and to see them disappointed in a disappointing locker room is tough on an athletic director because you know how much they invest. But to see them that excited, celebrating a big win, celebrating becoming bowl eligible, that's such a big deal because you know how hard they work and how much that means to them as young men going to a bowl game. Right. Well, speaking of the bowl game, they got to the Liberty Bowl, and that was just the longest game I think I myself might have been a part of. Um, I was working radio that night. I remember seeing you out on the sideline as well. You were down there. Sure. What do you remember about that game? Oh, gosh, I remember a lot about that game. I mean, that uh, game started with, uh, you know, a moment I'll never forget before the game even started, Dalton Wagner came over, kind of gave me a big bear hug and just mm -hmm. said thank you for making this a special experience for me and mm -hmm. that, that's awesome for um, an athletic director, for a student athlete to come mm -hmm. over and acknowledge that piece of it. And then, of course the game, I mean it was so exciting as we get out to a, a considerable lead, mm -hmm. um, the Liberty Bowl folks, they bring the trophy down, one of them taps me on the shoulder, says hey you want to get a picture with the trophy before we t no I don't I I'm somewhat superstitious I mean I thought the game was in hand okay. but also when we're up 16 17 points I'm not just... I'm not going to take a picture with the trophy on the sidelines with six seven minutes still left in that game mm -hmm. and good thing I didn't because um, yeah. Kansas made a furious comeback and took it to triple overtime I feel like it was we probably shouldn't have gone to triple overtime, but it was fun to watch, I will say. I mean, I know that you were out there and you were really excited when Arkansas ended up winning that game. Let's take a quick look at what happened at the end of it. So again, triple overtime. And this was kind of an interesting play call for starters, but sales over there, you've got all the guys in the booth that are so excited. When that moment started, I was just at the top of the screen about the 10 yard line. Okay. Um, when the ball sails, and you could tell that ball was going to sail well over the receiver's mm -hmm. head. I thought it was a great play call, by the you way. You did? Okay. I thought it was great. <laughs> I thought it was great. Uh, I love the execution of the play. Let's yes. put it that way. Um, but I jump up to celebrate the win, and as soon as I jumped, um, I felt my calf pop, and so oh. I strained my calf. <laughs> ah! I think I popped my, my cap. And so normally that would be one of those instances where, you know, I 
get excited, I would have run across the field if I could have. Right. I limped across the field. It took me a good <laughs> two or three minutes to get over to, to congratulate Coach Pittman. And then a, one of the docs saw me limping and mm -hmm. went and got an ace bandage to wrap up oh my calf my so I could go up on the, the stage for the trophy presentation. And then it was a pretty painful walk out to the car. Wow. I was excited and I think running on a little bit of uh, uh, energy from mm -hmm. the excitement of the game, but boy, my calf was hurting. I put my calf on that last play, but I loved it. <laughs> when you got it all wrapped up on the sideline, were any of the guys on the team kind of giving you a hard time? Oh yeah, anything? oh for sure. A little but, bit? Oh, they were all laughing at me, uh, for sure. <laughs> um, to see, especially with the, the ace bandage limping and they got me a bag of ice and um, <laughs> had to get some help out to the car. Yeah. It was a long walk to the car. Ew, yeah. Uh, so of course they were, especially like a bumper pool who I've become mm -hmm. really close to. Um, yeah, he took some cheap shots at me for sure. <laughs> Got to poke fun a little bit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, poke fun at the old man when he gets hurt. Just <laughs> jumping, okay? I was just jumping. But how exciting is it to see what Sam Pittman has been able to do since arriving here at Arkansas? It's awesome. It is awesome because we needed someone that could come in and change the culture of our football program and reignite and re-engage this entire state and make this state excited again for our football program. And we've seen, you know, our season tickets uh, dip to uh, somewhere in the high 20,000s um, when we had those back-to-back -back two and 10 seasons. And then of course we go into COVID, but coming out of COVID um, to go nine and four and then seven and six, and we're approaching close to 50,000 season tickets sold, which is uh, the most we've had in well over a decade. And, you know, our football program is our lifeline for our entire department because 75 to 80 percent of the revenue that we generate as a department comes through our football program. And so when they have success, it provides the fuel that we need within our budget for other sports to have success. And so what Sam has done is um, he's just reignited this athletic program um, we had some programs that were doing some really good things when you talk about what baseball has done and track yeah. and field and soccer was on their way up and of course Eric Musselman gets credit for what basketball has done but uh, football is kind of that anchor that if you're going to have a great athletic program across the board you need to make sure your football program is healthy. Well I know the staff looks a little different this year for this Arkansas football team. What are your expectations for them going into another year under Sam Pittman? Yeah, we lost some good coaches for sure uh, for, for better opportunities, but I think Sam did a great job in going out and taking his time and hiring, you know, Dan Eno says our offensive coordinator and then our co-defensive coordinators, Travis Williams and Marcus Woodson. And they were already starting to gel as they go over to that football office and to see the camaraderie exist and how hard they're working, especially um, during the spring. And they feel like they've been here for a lot longer than just a few months. And mm -hmm. so excited to see that team on the field this season. But Sam did a really good job um, in his fourth year, now going into his fourth year mm -hmm. as a head coach and kind of backfilling those spots because that's sometimes hard, especially for him out of the gate as a first time head coach to put his staff together. And mm -hmm. I think uh, for the first time in his four years, he feels solid about every person that's on his staff and kind of the, the collegial nature that they have within that building. Well, you got some big time talent coming back this year. You've got the addition of those great coaches. What are the expectations this year? Is it another bowl game? Do you think they can do it? A absolutely. I, after watching us in the spring and, you know, if we can keep KJ mm -hmm. healthy and Rocket can stay healthy and our offensive line, because we're still where we're, uh, we don't have the depth that the other teams in this league have, mm -hmm. but I think we're really good in our first 22. And if we can stay healthy where we need to stay healthy, I think we can be sneaky good this year. Sneaky good, sneaky I like good. it. Okay, well I know everyone's really looking forward to another exciting football season, but we're gonna move on to soccer because they had a pretty exciting season they as did, well. They did, for sure. Just some quick stats. They defeated Memphis and PKs 3-2 to make it to the Elite Eight for the second consecutive year. How impressed have you been with their success? Well, Coach Hale's another coach within our department that's built a, a program roughly from the ground up as mm -hmm. he's been here. And just to see as they went to, you know, one back-to-back -back SEC regular season titles, went to six straight championship games, now back-to-back -back Elite Eight appearances. Mm -hmm. um, he has put our soccer program 
on a national map. Mm -hmm. And everybody respects our program across the country. When you look at who he's able to schedule now, making a trip this season to go back out and play Duke in North Carolina, those are two premier programs that they're not going to play a program unless it helps them get better as a program. And so Arkansas, our women's soccer program, we're on the national map now, and that's a tribute to Coach Hale and his staff and our student athletes that have come along uh, in his tenure. Coach Hale is a character too. He's he's got oh, some for personality. Sure. For sure, <laughs> he, he's got some personality. And look, he he he's another guy. He's very genuine and true to who he is. Mm -hmm. If it's weak, I'm gonna win it. Love it. And when he's recruiting young women to come into his program. Um, he says, look, I'm here to be your soccer coach first and foremost. Right. I'm not here to make sure that you're happy as a college student. I'm here to be your soccer coach and to make you the best soccer player that you can be, and that's going to be my role. And if you want somebody that's going to sugarcoat and make you feel good about yourself each and every day, I'm probably not the coach for you. But if you want somebody that's going to push you and drive you and make you the best soccer player in the best soccer league that you can be, he said, this is the right place for you. Well, he certainly helped. Anna Potagil develop. I mean, she is now the program all-time leading scorer. I th you were at that game when she finally broke the record. Sure. I remember that. Yep. What was that moment like? And she's coming back as it's, well. Exactly. We, she's gotta, just going to keep she, building She's going to add on to that, but it, it's great to see. That's what, in this day and age of transfers, to see someone stay with mm -hmm. a program for four or five years and to be able to set and break records is pretty incredible. Right. And, you know, she's stayed with it. She has her sister here now. Um, I mean, she defines our women's soccer program now. Right. Well, I hear that the team is a little superstitious about you coming to games sometimes, or maybe it's just the SEC tournament. Can you explain this a little bit? <laughs> yes. Um, so, you know, the SEC tournament stretches for uh, roughly 10 days once mm -hmm. you get there. And so I can't go. I'd love to go to the beach for 10 days, of course. but it just doesn't work into my schedule. Yeah. So I would keep showing up for the championship games. Well, they, you know, they'd run through up to the championship game, and then the AD would show up and they would lose. <laughs> and so um, apparently I was the weak link that bringing was, the bad juju. was bringing the bad juju. <laughs> and then the same would happen during NCAA postseason play on the road. Like at home, I'm fine, okay? okay. I'm not a jinx at home. Okay. But apparently when I travel with them, in the postseason, whether it's for an SEC or an NCAA event, that's where the jinx of Hunter Yurcha comes in for our, winter, our women's soccer program. So there was a, a year, the last time we were in the championship, mm -hmm. I didn't tell them I was coming. Oh. I flew in, I didn't go over there and say hello to coach or, or anybody. <laughs> um, I sat up in the stands with my hat pulled down, so nobody knew I was there. Yeah. Well, we still lost. Oh. So whether, whether it's them knowing I'm there or sensing my presence, whatever yeah. the case may be, um, they think I'm the jinx. So are you still going to like go and hide a little bit or not let them I know I can't tell you that. I can't, can't reveal that Yeah, they could be watching this. <laughs> they Who knows? Be, right. They, we can't they let have them no know. Idea. Okay. So, we'll keep it a secret. I'm good at home. <laughs> it's when I go on the road. <laughs> well, volleyball at home playing in Barnhill is just always so fun to watch. And their head coach was just so hyped up after the Georgia Tech win. Jason Watson had an all-time post-game speech that we're going to take yeah. a quick listen to. Before you guys were born, this building was home to 40 minutes of hell. That's what happened when Nolan Richardson was coaching basketball in here. It was 40 minutes of just absolute, relentless hell on opponents. And we are for sure bringing that back here with us, right? A good, good play. Unbelievably impressed by just how well we just grinded out a win against another top 10 team here in, in Bonhill, right? Right? Welcome to Bonhill. Love it. They're bringing back the 40 minutes of hell to Barnhill. What did you think about their performance this season? Well, our volleyball team, you could just, this was building for them. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason's done a great job. Uh, putting this, the pieces to this program together. We probably should have been in the NCAA tournament the year before last. Got that opportunity with a little bit stronger schedule this year and beating Washington and Georgia Tech uh, there in, in Barnhill in front of some really good crowds and exciting volleyball matches. Exciting to see those young women uh, get over the hump, get an opportunity to go to the NCAA tournament. Not only go, we, we won our first round game and then we battled Oregon on Oregon's home floor in the second round game. And I think it was just an incredible 
season for our volleyball team and I think that's the expectation moving forward and regarding that speech I mean if you know Jason Watson he shows very little emotion <laughs> most of the time okay and so it was really neat to see him a little bit out of character um, there and fired up after the, the those wins and talking about the spirit of Barn Hill especially in his Australian accent and <laughs> I was you know say, <laughs> talk about Barn that Hill. So, yeah I, I love it so I mean, just as you talk, we've, we've talked about football and their success mm -hmm. and soccer and their success and now volleyball and their success. And of course, we know about our cross country programs. Right. And so just the, the, the overall fall sports success is really, I think it really feeds off of each other when one program has success, right. then the next, then the next. Well, I know that a lot of the athletes on campus, no matter what sport they're in, are really big on giving back to the community here in Northwest Arkansas. I think it's 20,000 lives have been impacted so far from community service alone from Arkansas athletes. Just how important is it as an athletics director to see that your student athletes are giving back? Yeah, we talk to our student athletes on a regular basis that we ask a great deal from this Northwest Arkansas community and from people across our state in support of them. Mm -hmm. We ask them and try to teach them the value of giving back to your community. And we rarely have to force our student athletes to volunteer to do mm -hmm. things in the community. They willingly do that and they have learned quickly that they get as much out of their volunteer efforts as the person or the entity they're volunteering for, whether it's going to read at a local elementary school, volunteering at a soup kitchen, going to the children's hospital and visiting young children that are there. Um, whatever the case may be, they've each kind of found their niche, each team finds their their kind of niche uh, from a volunteer standpoint. And again, rarely do we have to ask them to do it. They see great value in that. It's also been interesting to see how a lot of the athletes who are getting attention from NIL and, and they're making money, but they're giving it back to different foundations and causes that they really care about. How great is it to see that? That's that that's it, the spirit of giving back to your community and our, our student athletes. Again, they they see how special of a community this is, mm -hmm. how this community supports them and their success, and they want to give back. And so it's really cool to see our student athletes. Yes, there's some there's some NIL components yeah. to that, but um, the resources they're earning and to give that back to the community or just supporting, like, you know, KJ Jefferson teaming up with the United Way to mm -hmm. help raise money for flood relief in his home state of Mississippi. Right. That's really cool. I love that. And I know that it's just going to continue to grow as well as these athletes continue to give back to the Arkansas community here. That's going to wrap up, though, our first episode. I know we still have plenty of other things to go through. I think the next one we're going to be looking at basketball. How would you say Arkansas basketball did this past year? Uh, we were on a exciting roller coaster yeah. ride all season <laughs> long. That's a good way to leave it. We'll leave you guys hanging on that one, and we'll see you next time for our second episode of our year in review.